guys, so welcome to the show. So today I have my very good guest, Nicole Rose Stillings. If you guys remember, I actually had her on my podcast before. That was the time that she was on the show and we talked so much about her big shot on the like HBO Max. And I think this was a really good episode. If you, always, if you guys want to listen to that, I will definitely link it in the description. But today I have her in person. Hello! Oh my god, I'm like messing up already with this mic. I love this mic though. No, we are getting used to it. And I feel like I'm so excited for this in-person interviews. And I feel like it's so like full circle coming like, together. No one's podcasted in person since like 2019. I know. This is actually like a really big deal, you guys. Yeah, I am like so excited about this. And I also want us to like catch up because I feel like it's been... When was that? Like so. Some- when we did our first episode together, I think it was summer after the big shot when Bethany so. launched, right? Yeah. So that would have been 2021. I think so, and right? So summer of 2021, ago. yeah. Like, basically, I'm old news, so I don't know if your people are going to care. We don't have a season two coming out that we know it's so funny because I remember I was, uh, t- because I got, like, I was talking to your publicist yeah and at the time and i was telling her i was like oh like i am also like interested in like pr services and she's like she gave me a bunch of questionnaires <laughs> and she's like are you in a show are you doing anything and i'm like no no but i have a merch or something she's like that like, no. <laughs> i know that she's like well you know if you're like not like popping she's like you have to make some like stuff up so like it's more she's a really good publicist i love her but that's like it's wild but yes but at least she tells you the truth okay no, it'd be worse if somebody said to you like sure i'll take 10 grand or you know because it's not this whatever it is it's not like free to have a publicist and then they didn't get the job done she's good at the strategy part that like actually does Create something noteworthy that people are interested in. Talking exactly, about. because I feel like I didn't know about this before. The way she was telling me, she's like, Yes, PR is good, but you have to have something going on so that PR can use it to make an even bigger deal. Exactly. But she's like, if you don't have anything going on, she's like, save your money and like whenever something comes up, come to me. Which is really genuine because I know. most people would just take your money, like, sure, here's my Venmo. Exactly. Also because like in case people don't know, like, you also just said it too. It's like, PR is so expensive. Yeah. Like, I just can't believe you could. It's pay. thousands of dollars a month for someone who doesn't do Because it's like a, having a lawyer on retainer. For like, sure. You're paying, like, I don't know, five. It's days. literally the same. Yeah. yeah. It's exact. Yeah. I have a lawyer right now, not a publicist. I can basically afford, like, one at a time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, tell us what you have been up to since. The show. Since, since, like, the show. since the last time we have talked. Yeah, so, like, so what is much. something going on? Yeah. So, well, first of all, we both moved to Miami since the show. Uh, welcome. You're the newbie. Yes. Um, I've been here for like 15 months now, getting settled. I was in a different part of Florida before that. Um, really, the biggest shift for me is that when that show launched, women that had watched it would DM me or email me or like, I don't know, I guess... I guess DM is really the way people can mm-hmm. because you know I, know I always answer. I answer them all myself. Um, Even though they slide into your DM. <laughs> they slide on in and they're slippery little critters. And I mean, it takes me a while sometimes to get back to all of them, but I really do try to go through everything. And um, they asked me if I would help coach them on uh-huh. confidence. And yeah. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like, I have the exact thing for that. I've been using it for 10 years to manifest amazing things. It's the exact same process I use to manifest Bethany because I wanted her as a mentor like seven years before getting that show and to manifest getting selected out of thousands of people for that show. So I just started teaching. I started codifying the process I already had to manifest, which mm-hmm. is it's going to go real deep real quick, but it's about rewiring your subconscious brain. Yeah. And I went back and looked at every this tool I built. I call it the mindset tuner. Yeah. Why? Because it rewires your mind and raises your vibration to the mm-hmm. frequency of the goals and dreams that you have, which a lot of times we're focusing on what we don't have, what we don't want, and not flowing our energy in the direction of building what we want. Yeah. You know. No, right? exactly. Exactly. So that was the biggest shift was... People just literally slid into my DMs and were like, will you coach me? And I was like, yeah, I actually would be great at this. And I have a whole system that you can use. And 
it's been a whole business since then. So right. no, that is that's the so weirdest cool. thing to come out of reality TV, but the most incredible. Also, I feel like the greatest thing about it, like, because when I was watching the show, is like, because you have such great confidence, like, in there. Thank and you. also because, like, I have met Bethany, I think, once. She scares the hell out of me. She oh, yeah. really scares the hell out of me. Oh, yeah. Like, she seems very cool person, successful and all, but, like, she gives, like, I don't know, but I'm scared. I feel like I wouldn't be, like, that confident. You know what it is? She's a wild card. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, everyone feels more comfortable when people are yeah. a little bit more, like, low-key. Yeah, but exactly. But Bethany's high-key, and we kind of love that about I her. I know. But I feel like that's what people <clears throat> love about her. But that's why I feel like comparing to everyone else in the show, you are like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm good at social media. I will do, like, it's like, all this power. I'm like, how, where does she get this? Is she on crime? Like, yeah. is she on, I'm like, what is she on? Like, I want what she has. If I if I could bottle my energy, I would sell it because I actually think it would be addicting and people would need to buy it. I really think so too. And I think also, like, most of your messages and like whatever you post on social media too, is like, it's so like positive, but it's also so much about like, because that's why I want to ask you about it too. It's like manifestation and like, because yeah. I do believe in that, but I feel like I want, I want you to really explain it. Like what, like how can someone who's like skeptical to like the whole concept of manifestation, okay, so how would they get started? I love, I love this. Okay. So let's, let's talk first about the skeptical part yeah, yeah. and what they could do to prove to themselves right. that it works. Okay. So first of all, a lot of people are blocked from believing this because mm -hmm. When you realize that your thoughts, what does manifestation mean, right? right. It's a definition. Your thoughts create things, okay? Your, the thoughts that you have bring tangible, physical, people, places, situations, et cetera, into your physical environment, right? That's literally what the definition of manifestation yeah. is. And taking that full circle, becoming a manifester means that you are intentionally creating. So you're no longer doing what Napoleon Hill calls drifting, where you just drift along through your day, through your job, through dating, through your life with yeah. friends you don't even get along with, or, you know, in a marriage that sucks or whatever the case is, you are more intentional about creating the energy that you want to receive, right? By giving it, by building it first within ourselves, right? Our internal world creates our external environment. So here's the most simple test that a skeptic can do, okay? Have you ever had that experience where like, okay, we both are single, right? We were yeah. just talking about that. Yes. We were doing a little update before we got on here. Um, have you ever like just kind of been in a mood, you've been tired, maybe work didn't go as planned that day, and you had a date coming up, but like you're not really sure about the person. Maybe it's an app date, like yeah. Bumble or Hinge mm -hmm. for Tinder. I don't know. Maybe yeah. like a grinder. Maybe yeah, it. She's getting very good at. <laughs> I got it. I got you, bro. And so in your head, you're like, I don't really want to go. This is gonna be fun. Maybe you yeah, even, like, like I'm not feeling it. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe you even like text that to a friend. You know, exactly. and you're like, I have a date tonight. I'm not feeling it. Like, don't know if he's a vibe. Whatever. Right. You go on the date and it sucks if you come with that attitude. Exactly. It's never fun. You check in your clock, you're slugging your drinks, you can't wait to get out of there. You go home, you pull the covers over your head, maybe you turn on the big shot with Bethany, right? And I'm just kidding, like <laughs> some other type of reality <laughs> TV to medicate the pain away of that awful date. Exactly. Like, what are people watching? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Perfect match. Or, I know. Oh my god, I was like just gonna say people talk about that. I'm not I'm not watching it yet, but I know everybody's watching it. I'm just like I'm stuck in my like suck shit right now. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm you should watch it. If Netflix was sponsoring me, I'd be like, I'll pull that shit in there. <laughs> watch perfect match. I was just trying to think of like what you would do after a bad date, right? But okay, so the so the skeptic, what yeah. they can do is just test it. Mm -hmm. Like maybe with a date, maybe with an event that you're going right, to, right. a night out with friends, mm -hmm. whatever you pick, like you know, they have to want to try this. Right. Like, first of all, that desire has to be there because if somebody is still stuck in that loop that like life happens to me, not for me. Yeah. But they're not then they're not taking ownership of how their actions, their thoughts, their beliefs are mm. causing situations in their life and in their experience, and therefore they are not owning their power. Right, right. Right. So if they don't the first step is some people are just not ready. Okay. Sure. But they will be one day and then they're gonna look back on their life and be like, why the I think about this earlier. I don't know if you need to believe that or what. Um, are we explicit on this podcast? Oh, yeah. The audio version, yes. The video version, we will clip that out. 
<laughs> YouTube has not, YouTube does not like that. Good to know, good to know, okay. Um, so, so they can test it out by just picking, pick one way to go. I mean, my suggestion to you would be to flow it in a positive way. So right. tonight, just say a couple of mantras. Tonight's going to be great. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have fun. This person, even if, you know, I don't like them as a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a husband yeah. or a wife, we're going to have a good time and I'll make a friend. Mm -hmm. And when you show up with that attitude, that's what you get. You get right, what you exactly. think about it. Mm -hmm. um, so, or you could try it the other way if you really want to be like, I'm going to have a terrible night tonight. Like, go I out and you'll have a terrible night and you'll but come But what would you say, like, I guess, like, the way to shift that? I know I feel like some people are, like, focus on something that, like, that makes you happy or, like, something that brings you joy. Because I feel like there was literally, this is, like, so, <laughs> I feel like I'm having deja vu. I, I feel like I had, like, one of those days and, like, it started bad, and I was kept saying that, oh my yeah. god, today's not my day, today's not my day. And it just kept getting worse. Right, like, because worse, you, worse. Keep, cause you worse. keep saying it. Yeah, I and I feel like I was like that putting that. it out there. Yeah. I feel like I was just putting it out there. It's and true. I feel like that's just not healthy. Like, it's just because I thought I was intentionally, not even unintentionally, I mean, sabotaging my day. It's because you're getting more conscious. Yeah. So we all go through layers of like shedding layers of the onion and waking up and being more and more aware of right. how our thoughts are creating everything that we're living because thoughts come before any actions that right. you take, right? Which then every action has a reaction, right? There's For nothing, sure. We're in a universe where everything is vibrational. So everything has an impact. I know. And everything is a wave of vibration. For sure. So everything is felt and responded to. And at any given moment, you can shift the timeline. Mm -hmm. You can shift the future by how you act in the now. So I'll give you a good example of yeah, that. Yeah, do that. So I went to, so what you're saying is like, how do we get in the loop? Yeah, like how do you do that? Yeah, like, that's what happens. Today's not my day. Right? Exactly, or this yeah. Date sucks. Like, how could you like pinch yourself or be like, just like, like wake up and like just like try to focus because I feel like that's what just keeps happening. So like I mean the first of it is part of it is just recognizing you're in the loop right, right. and just choosing to tell yourself a different story. Mm -hmm. So so I'll explain to you how I did yes, it and it. maybe this will be a benefit because a lot of the stuff that's metaphysical I know yeah. some people are like what are they talking about like you need to know how it really works uh -huh. and then you can do it. So I'm 36. I'm single. I don't love going to weddings by myself. And this is what I was going to with my mom last yeah. weekend. Like, siblings younger than me getting married, family and family, right? And yeah. so their sister is by law, by marriage, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I love them very much, but it's like, yeah, it's not like high on my list I of know, priorities right? exactly. for a holiday weekend to go to yeah. a wedding alone. So I'm like, kind of, I could tell that something was off in my energy. Mm -hmm. And I realized that it was I was dreading the wedding. Yeah. And I was like, why am I dreading it? And then, like, I went through that process of assessing the thought pattern yeah. I was in. And then I was like, but it could be fun. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, I can make it fun. And then I was like, every time I set my intention to have fun, I have fun. So I'm going to figure out a way to have fun tonight. Um, now, I don't know about you, but I like having fun by saying ridiculous shit to strangers. <laughs> I want to hear this. I want to hear this. <laughs> so I'm like, I know this is like, I'm so different than other people that talk about manifestation, yeah. right? I'm like, how can I make my life? I know, I know. Like, I'm so <laughs> I mean, sorry, by messing with everybody. Okay. Um, I'm going to like watch my mouth. So I'm like, how can I make my life amazing by messing with everybody? And I'm like, all right. So we go in, there's these like two like silver foxes hitting mm -hmm. on me and my sister. You saw yeah. us, like yeah. two Italian chicks. We kind of look alike, we talk alike, we act alike. We do the same thing with our hand. Like if she were here, she'd just be doing this too. Um, and very Italian. Very, very, very Italian. Italian. Very Italian. Napoli, baby. Um, and so... I'm like, they they were asking us about, like, are we married? Do we want family? Yeah. Or, you know, at a wedding, you want to ask exactly. a bunch of girls running around solo. And uh, I'm like, yeah, I can't wait to get married. I'm so excited yeah. to have kids and just mess them up way worse than my parents <laughs> messed me up. <laughs> and they just crack up. They, they got it right away. Like, they got it right away. Yeah, yeah. There were other people I made really like uncomfortable. The they were probably they were, like, like, very uncomfortable. I had no clue I was kidding. Like I told some woman who ended up being like the grandmother of the groom. 
I'm not on that side of the family, so I you know, <laughs> so you I was, no like, at a table with important people. Why would you sit me at a table with important people? Just put right, me in the, exactly. in the back. And um, and I was like, I got there and she was introducing herself and I was like, I'm sorry, please hold. Like, it's a wedding, I got a drink, I really can't right, take the right, shit exactly. over. And she looked at me horrified and I was like, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I actually don't even really drink that much. I just wanted to weird you out. Yeah, and she yeah. Laughed, but, um, yeah, so sometimes they land and sometimes they don't, but I had a good time. Yeah. And then when I was having fun and laughing and joking, this really cute 30 year old Italian dude named Frank came up and took me to dance and whisked me away to the dance floor and Italian's swooned just me for an hour. Yeah. yeah. It's more magnetic, right? I know, right? <laughs> no, it's so interesting. <laughs> it's so not related, but I don't know how Italians, like, they find each other because, like, they're, they're everywhere. We do. Like, like, really everywhere. But there's also not that many of us. I know, that's true. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like, there you are either everywhere, but you're also nowhere. <laughs> also, the people who are, like, any percent Italian claim it. Right? Know, it's like, I'm, like, 3% Italian on my grandma's side. It's like, yeah. that counts, boo. Like, I'm good with the foot. Cheers. <laughs> Salute. <laughs> like, whatever. <laughs> Today's podcast is brought to you by our partner Mint Mobile. Let me start by saying how much money I have been spending lately on so many things like groceries, rent, going out, just food overall, just a lot of money. At least I'm glad I'm saving something on my phone service plan thanks to Mint Mobile. You guys are not familiar with Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers the premium wireless phone service plan for starting as low as $15 a month. And you don't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data. They are built on the nation's largest 5G network. They keep the cost low because they sell directly to you online. They cut out the retail stores and salespeople. Switching to Mint Mobile was super easy because they also have their digital eSIM cards. And I have the iPhone 14 Pro Max, so I just activated very quickly and it was working just as well on my phone. There is no need to standing around waiting in line for the big wireless store. You can keep your current device, phone number, and easily switch to phone services. You can use the link in the description to get premium wireless service starting at $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash WB. That is mintmobile.com slash WB. Stop paying more than you need to on your wireless bill. Start saving big with Mint Mobile. So when you say like manifestation, what is something that you would say that like you kind of manifested and like it actually happened besides the show? Okay, Gr- the great show. question. Because I was like, that's such a wild one because yeah. I had been working and thinking and flowing energy towards that and putting it on my vision board yeah. for seven years, like mm-hmm. both for TV and for Bethany. Yeah. Didn't know that was going to be a two for one. Mm-hmm. I thought right. they might be different, you know, different yeah. experiences, but the universe has a way of surprising and delighting us. Um, the DJ career. I had a whole right. DJ career. I don't know if everybody knows this, but prior to doing television, um, I DJed for almost 10 years. It was almost a seven figure business. So, Certainly yeah. successful by most for people's sure, yeah. standards. It paid for my life during the pandemic. Yeah, really? the world I mean, shut yeah, down. Exactly. Um, and and still play occasionally if it's if it's the right vibe and the right, right. and the right dollar signs, you know. For sure. Um, but I had wanted to be a DJ. I w- I went to Emory for undergrad, and I remember like around about <clears throat> twenty one years old. Mm-hmm. I started really. I was always into music, but Atlanta had a cool like house music scene and I started really getting into it and I love dancing and I just love the energy right. of the dance floor. Yeah. Like people were just there to like heal and move emotion through their body and just get in a workout. It was just a good vibe. Like you find a community on yeah. the dance floor at the right place with the right DJ mm-hmm. at the right time. And I was just mesmerized by that. I really, really wanted to create that environment, that experience and flow my energy towards making a group of people right. happy together. Cause it's, you know, that power of our energy coming together is so exciting and intoxicating. Um, and I thought about it for years before I actually told anyone yeah. or went out and did it, but I thought about it. I would journal about it. I, when I got serious about it, that's when I started building my own manifestation tool, right? the manifest mindset, which yeah. is the basis of the program that I coach on now. Mm-hmm. It's just funny how you build things for yourself and right. 
You don't know that they even would work for anybody else. That's like, I feel like the interesting thing about like the things you think about, you're like, oh my God, I want to make this happen. Then you put it out in the world and you don't even know if it will, something will happen. And it actually does work. And like people start like, oh, like this is working out for me. Or like, yeah. thank you for saying this or mentioning this. It's like, that's the greatest thing about like the, our minds that like, because I mean, at, at the end of the day, you know, we all somewhat think alike and like, if you yeah. are working on something and you have some goal from that, like the course or the product that you are selling, there's definitely a, a person out there who is in need of that. And For sure. sometimes we never think of that. You know what I mean? We think like, oh my God, like that's already exists or, or who am I to do this? Exactly. Like at exactly. first when, <laughs> to make the jump in like two months mm -hmm. from TV to coaching, I was like, who am I to do this? And mm -hmm. I was like, if people want it, I'm going to do it. And like, here's the thing. People want what they want, so we might as well give the people what they want. Right, also, right. I'm the fit for some people, and I'm mm -hmm. not the fit for other people. Yeah, yeah. Right? You know, for it's sure. like, it's a certain vibe. But really, taking my course is, I tell people, I'm like, get ready, because this is not a personal development or a spirituality course. This is like, move your ass and do it. Like, this right. is like, you're watching Netflix and a course at the same time, and you're learning, and you're laughing, and I'm being weird, and it's, it's all like, coming together. But I do it in a way that helps rewire them and move them closer to the thought patterns I want them to have. Because ultimately, your brain is the best manifestation tool. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we can, I can teach everybody all these fancy things. Like you could Amazon yourself yeah. like a journal to script in, a crystal to meditate with. You could, um, I don't, you could go do Kundalini. Like there's so many different things you could do right. to manifest. But at the end of the day, you have to flow your thoughts in a very specific way to achieve a very specific outcome. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we don't do that. Think about how often we have a goal, like let's take my goal of I want to be a DJ. And then we tell ourselves all the reasons why we can't or who are we to do that. And that's like, I feel like so messed up part about being human. It's like, we always think about like, oh, I want to, I mean, the actor or I want to be on TV. Before thinking about like how we can make that happen, we are like, you can do this like X, Y, and Z because you're like, you have a job or you have something else and something else. Like it's like, the list keeps going on. I'm like, yeah. the amount of time you're spending to even make that list, you could be thinking about like how you could make that happen. I just feel like sometimes maybe deep down, we are like discouraging ourselves to do something. A thousand percent. Just like, because like at the end of the day, it's like no one is stopping us except us, you know? Like, I mean, people can tell us so much stuff. Be like, oh my God, you suck. Or like, you're not good. Or like, don't do this. Don't ruin your career. Or like, this is a terrible career. Or something like that. But at the end of the day, they're not the one doing it, anything, you know? Like we are the one right. making our own decisions. And which is the reason I feel like we are our own, like, the barrier that like we are stopping us from like whatever we want to do. Exactly. To and that's why I said the first step in getting over the skepticism is just testing it because you'll mm -hmm. notice right away whether it's manifesting a penny or just manifesting a fun time. Like in my opinion, it's better to start with the emotion of it Yeah. because that's what we're all really going for, right? Is to have fun on the journey. You know, a lot of times when you get to the goal, it's not that exciting. Yeah. Well, actually, that's a very good point that you're mentioning because I wanted to ask you this too. Because I feel like goal is important to have, but I feel like also like goal is not what you should have in mind when you are thinking about whatever the project is. Because I feel like people think about like, oh, like I will have this career and like it will make money. And like they're like, oh, okay, goal is like money is the goal. But I feel like you cannot inspire yourself with that, you know, because I'm like, at the end of the day, even if you have a lot of money, I mean, yes, money does solve problems, you sure. know, it's good, but it's just still empty, you know, like you need something else. Right, so it's purpose. Exactly. Right? Just having a reason that you wake up and get out of bed in the morning, and it's probably got to be something more than just putting dollar bills in your bank account that you can't even see or smell or touch or do anything. Right, like really other that's than exactly what it is. Because I feel like it's just like sometimes we get so focused on like, what is the outcome from what we want to make or what we want to do. But I feel like sometimes the outcome is not what we are focusing on. We want to, we should focus on the journey. Uh, because yeah. I think a lot of the times, I mean, like this whole career that I started, I legit not even for a second, I thought that this would be what I would be doing because I, 
I legit did not think of it. I'm pretty sure you didn't even think of it either. Like, I mean, yeah. nowadays, I mean, I know people are like, oh, I want to be a TikToker, or I want to be a YouTuber, yeah. or I want to be Instagrammer. That was not a thing. That was not, that a, was thing. not a thing. Literally, I think when we started, I'm, I, I'm not sure if we started like around the similar time, but like 2016, 2017, there were like that was not a thing. It was like I'm a little older. Okay, you're right. You're right. You're right. But you look so young. That's why I didn't even expect that. So I'm just saying, like, I did not expect that, like, that Instagram would like kick off people's careers or something. But like now, people are thinking like, oh, I'm gonna become that person. And but immediately they're thinking like dollar sign, dollar sign. But I'm like, that's not what it was like when we, when we started. Like it was kind of like. Oh, like they get free shit or like free, free, like free clothing, free products. And like, and I was like, oh, it's nice, but I need like something to pay the bills. Like, you know, right. I cannot donate the clothes to pay my bills. It's true. <laughs> it's true. And this is a cute apartment. So, <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. I feel like it's very different, but I realized like along the way, like doing all these things, like that made me happy. Like I loved going to the events, which we were just talking about yeah. earlier. Or like meeting like other creators like like you and like because I'm like yes money is like part of it but just like not all of it. I love that we did that Google Creator project together today. This is so funny. Yes, that's like another thing. <laughs> and then they me. disinvited. I know. Me. <laughs> so good. I was such a hot mess. In that so program. guys, I, I I'm not sure like because we are out of the project. I'm the second project is out. So there was this project called Google for Creators. It was kind of like. Google Story, like essentially like Google Stories, yeah. like like how Instagram Stories and then like Google Stories. And I remember we had our first Zoom call, and I, I introduced myself, and like then I saw you in yeah. the call. So it was very cool that like you were in there. I too. was so happy to have a friend on that. No, me too, me too, me too, because there was so much happened mm -hmm. along the way, like in that project, and then I was so happy that you were there because like. At least there was someone that I could be like, oh, like, what's going what's on? What's going on? Like, because, actually, what are we supposed to be doing? <laughs> because I think people don't realize, I mean, Google is a <clears throat> big, big company, but also the way they do the whole thing, they literally, like, pilot a project and they see, like, oh, let's see if it works. If it doesn't work, they just cut it right away. It's, like, right. over. Because they, 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 they literally have to do they have so, so many things. Yeah, they're like, we don't have time for this. And, like... But I feel like sometimes that along the way, it's like you don't realize what's what you are doing and like what you should be doing to make it work. Um, that is something like I was kind of disappointed by. But I love that I get to meet, I get to connect with some people, but also like I get to connect more with you deeply yeah. through that. But that was a very cool project that we got into it. I mean, I was like paid to make more content for my website. So right. oh, yeah. I think the only thing I didn't like about this, and like, I'm gonna end it on that note, that topic. I think it's like the con. It was great to make a content for the website, but I think the plugin or the software they were using keeps crashing the website. Because yeah. I think still to this day, there are times that I keep getting a notification from like Amazon Web Services that like your resources really? have been, <laughs> and it's all because I have those stories. It's like you guys are Google, I know. figure it out. Okay, <laughs> that's legit what I thought. That like, I'm like they would fix this issue and like do it. Yeah. But anyway, so like the greatest part about the like the being in the industry is like I feel like you get to do so many different things you know like having a blog is one thing you know like you have you can you write and like there could be other people social media and like you get to like go to events like you get to meet people you get to create content for the brands that like you never thought you would work yeah. with yes maybe the money would be not as much but like it's like the, I feel like the greatest part about it like working at least because I would say at least from my perspective there was like time that I remember I dreamed about working for Chipotle. I mean, maybe that's not a big thing for some people, but that was like big for me. Okay, I love it. That's so a manifestation. It counts. Like, I, in your heart counts. I was like, oh my god! And I remember the time that I worked with them, and it was not like they were not paying me a lot of money. They were like, I mean, decent money, but it wasn't like, oh my god, like so many it's dollars. A cool brand. Yeah. But they gave me even that, you know, they have these, like, famous burrito cards. And, like, they you can get, like, I don't know, some burritos. So, like, unlimited amount of burritos for a while. I remember when I first got that. And I remember, like, I was like, oh, my God, this is actually happening. That's the first time I realized, like, I'm like, oh, like, this is part of the journey. Yeah. And, like, some things that I accomplish. And, like, that makes me happy. So, let me ask you this. When you got that burrito card, didn't you feel really powerful? Like, wow, I used to lie in bed visualizing this, dreaming about this. Look at Instagram, look at other creators they were working with, wonder, you know, what I could do to win a client like that. And then, boom, 
you exactly. had it. Like, it is so, so powerful. Yeah, it's so powerful because I feel like I remember I would I feel like I kind of manifested that. That's exactly what yeah. because I feel like I would look at some of these videos and I remember I, would, I saw like David Dobrik's video and I was like, oh, I wish I got that. You know, like I wish I had that. And I was like deep down, I was like, oh my god, I hate him. Like, why does he have it? Why does he have so that's the opposite of manifestation. I know, I know. We don't, don't want to do that. that. Don't do that. We want to celebrate everybody's success because there's room for us all. Even David Dobrik. <laughs> but I feel like that was like a good motivation. I feel like it's good to have like some sort yeah. of motivation to like push in your career. And I feel like also like since we're talking about this, I feel like it's good to talk about it too. Social media is such a like interesting field because i feel like the time and like the things were so different and it was just instagram and now it's like instagram tiktok pinterest and like youtube youtube shorts like so much is going on what is something you are doing to like at least like to keep yourself like happy with the with your career that you're doing with social media but also like what is something that you are doing to like not burn out with social media so I do a lot of self-care. I mean, like I'm in the business, right? Mm -hmm. So and I'm coaching people. And so I always need to be grounded and aligned. Um, it would be unfair to the people that I work with if I wasn't. So I meditate every day. Yeah. And sometimes I meditate before I do a podcast or before social media too, especially if I've just, I've been running around and I'm feeling tired or I don't know, something else just like happened in my world and I want to yeah. like get into alignment again. Um, I think part of... I still experiment with what tools we're focusing on. Like right now we're using the podcast, uh, TikTok to kind of promote our, our show, Big Queen Energy. Yeah. It's like mm -hmm. solo apps yeah. where I just like talk all about manifestation. Um, and we're seeing what's working and I don't really, you know, I don't exactly have the answer like what the future is going to look like yeah. for the brand that I am now. Mm -hmm. Like I know what used to work. I know that like, TikTok was amazing for TV clips. I know that right. like Instagram was great for my fashion picks and my DJ picks. Yeah. Is it as good for my manifestation content? The jury's out. Yeah. Um, but one thing that I'm working on is not detaching myself and my worth from the results uh -huh. and showing up and making things that can serve somebody and that I have fun doing. Yeah. So less worrying about like, the coolest trending reel, but mm -hmm. like if there's a message that came to me in meditation or hot yoga that morning mm -hmm. that I really want to share with people, just giving the message that I want to share instead yeah. of being like, is this on my sales calendar? Is this going to go viral? Like allowing myself to have the freedom to just flow from the heart. Does that make sense? No, it does. Think? It really does. Because I feel like, and that's why I like about your energy because I feel like you always like, you're like, Oh, let me find a purpose behind it. And let me, let me see if this like, makes me happy and it's like stands for what what i want to do mine is like exact opposite i'm like oh my god like is this trending okay let me let me think of something and i would literally sit for hour or hours be like how can i come up with something even sometimes i cannot come up with something i force myself to like write some shit then i'm like oh, i'm gonna hang myself for it it's fine whatever like that's what i'm saying it's like it's messed up like we get into our own head yeah like it's it. totally Everybody messed does. up like it's not healthy at all but i feel like that's what makes me sometimes like dislike social media not mm -hmm. hate but dislike because i feel like there's always this like at this with instagram it was kind of slower pace i mean yes people would post every day but there wasn't like trend topping here, here and there yeah. But with TikTok, things happen so quickly and you're like, oh my God, this is trending. It's not trending. Do I do this? Do I not do this? It's like, there's so much. You so have what always... if you worry less about it and I just know. put out there what feels good to you? I feel like I am kind of like questioning my craft too much. Anyway. Like, I feel like we before, all do it, right? but just recognize it and just tell yourself a different story. I feel like before I wasn't questioning that as much, but nowadays I'm like, because there's also so many channels to put on. I'm like, it's a lot. It's a lot. That's one thing I would say about it because I'm like, I, in the past, I'm like, it was just Instagram and I'm like, okay, it's good. You know, like at this Instagram, Instagram stories, I'm like, okay, this is good. I can handle it. But now it's like Instagram, Instagram stories, there's Instagram reels, there's uh, TikTok, like YouTube, YouTube shorts, it's like Pinterest. Now Pinterest is paying for the creators. I'm like, yeah. how many <laughs> channels that could come up with? And I feel like in our career, sometimes like you have to think about, you're like, oh my God, what am I, what I want to do? And like, would, it, would this be relevant for me? But also 
you always constantly think about like, am I relevant right now? So let me ask you this. Do you have like a meditation or a workout practice? Anything that raises your vibration? Yeah. I, I feel like whenever I go to like, that's what I try to do. Like if I go to gym, even if the, yeah. the days that like, I'm like, I, I shouldn't be going, that at least gives me that like inspiration. Kind of inspiration. Right? inspiration. I'm like, I like boost or like reset that I really need because I feel like sometimes there's so much going on in my head and I'm like, oh, I can't, like, I just can't. But I feel like the gym, like, definitely gives that for me. Right, because it's literally a boost of endorphins. So normally after a workout, I just feel, like, more in flow. And right. the right idea for this post I was going to create or this video I was going to make usually comes to this podcast episode. I literally write my podcast episodes in my head, in hot, in my head in hot yoga. Like, all the time. so cool. It just comes to me. But I... I set the intention to receive information at certain times throughout my day. Mm -hmm. That's why meditation is so powerful because we get so busy. We're so distracted by all the different, you know, pieces of technology, our phones, our, because all the different things that we're doing. Yeah. That it's really helpful to just have some practices where you can get back into that flow state because it makes building content much easier and much more stressful. Would you say like it had like cons of like having the social media presence? Like that's kind of the social media presence we have, like in your dating life or just overall? I think it's only a positive. I mean, cause I'm the way that I see it is any guy who is not man enough to date a woman who's done TV and you know, has a check mark and like yeah. it has an online presence is not the guy for me. I mean, like right, I'm just way yeah. too big of a personality. I want an alpha man. So to me, I actually think it's like a barrier to entry. Like if that repels you, great. We weren't going to be a fit anyway. Right. Like exactly. I sparkle and I shine pretty brightly and I want a man that is comfortable with that. And he's out there. I know he is. I can see him in my meditations. I visualize him. I can see our baby. I know oh, we got one. So I'm not cute. sure about two, but I know we got one in the bun. Okay, this connects me to what I want to ask. Like, so what is something like next for you? Like, what is something you want to accomplish in your career or just like life-wise overall? Because I feel like when you yeah. think about it, like from my perspective at least, like you have, you are verified, you have like decent amount of following and you have been on TV. Like those are like very big accomplishments. Thank you. So like what is something like more that you would want to do? That you would say that well, you haven't done or you're cool. envisioning. You can put it out there, manifesting. No, I love that you're asking me this. I have chills right now because it's fun to think about yeah. this. And this is part of manifesting. Because maybe we can do a follow-up and actually that happens. I love it. Well, yes. Okay, I'll see you right. pregnant next <laughs> The baby. I love my baby. Um, yeah, I do want a baby. I mean, I want to get married and have a baby. That's the personal side of it. But mm -hmm. I want the marriage first. Not yes. Just Don't get pregnant. <laughs> And if I don't get pregnant without the without the ring. Yeah, I mean, I also would just, a like, kid is a gift right now, but I'm just not really having sex. Who are we kidding? I'm just working and coaching and I'm like making cool shit on the internet. Booked um, and busy. Booked and busy. Booked and busy, baby. Um, that sounds like a hashtag. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. So I like it. Um, so, my, so that's the personal thing that we are manifesting. You know, yeah. like a soulmate right now. And bringing that more into focus this year. I was really busy last year building the full coaching program. Right. Now, I coached like 50 people one-on-one -on -one to incredible transformations. Mm -hmm. We built an entire app. It's called the Manifest Mindset. Check it out. Um, and I gave a TEDx talk. Got a second invitation, started writing my second talk and was like, holy crap, I need to take a deep breath because right. I'm getting out of alignment with like literally what I teach. Like I'm going too hard. Like I need to yeah. slow down a little. So I want to just refocus and have a bit more balance like it's cool we built a bunch of things my programs are really transformational i'm so grateful that god has given me the opportunity to do this work um in the future for me next is like my long-term goal is a million lives like yeah. let's change a million lives let's change a million yeah. lives um and probably not just through on a deeper level like i've probably already done that with instagram posts mm -hmm. like i want to have a million people read my book or go through a program of mine like some intimate touch point like more than just a 30 second reel. Um, so that's my long term goal that could take 10 years yeah. to accomplish, but I'm gonna go for it. And mm -hmm. I think about it every day, every morning. Yeah. I think about it and I flow energy towards that in my meditation. Um, and in the near future, it's really just, um, just expanding, figuring out how we're going to, like right now, my challenge is, like I said, Taking what I do that is very like pie in the sky, very yeah. metaphysical, very like quantum physics, like subconscious rewiring, mm -hmm. and just kind of making it more yeah. accessible. 
for everybody who were to where they could get involved like for five minutes a day, you know, right. just taking the things that I do and figuring out how best to serve everyone rather right. than just like the people who saw my talk on Mind Valley and are like really ready no, for I that next that, level I transformation. Yeah. yeah. Well, would so. you say like, do you see yourself being on TV? Again? Oh yeah. Long term yeah. vision. Sorry. I, was I, was just saying, I was like, I can, I can totally see you like being on TV. My again. dream. And so one of my advisors on the Manifest Mindset, amazing, amazing friend now, um, he worked for Disney. Mm -hmm. And so this has been a running conversation yeah. where the goal is to have, I, I have this vision that the streamers like HBO yeah. Max and Netflix yeah. and Hulu are eventually going to take people like me, course creators that are also entertainers, right? Yeah. That's very specific. Exactly. Person. Because like there are course creators I have seen and I'm telling you, they are like, falling asleep. Yeah, literally. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, this is a lecture. Someone put like snooze button in my brain. Like, like you don't I, need I, to go back to college. Exactly. You want to have fun and be uplifted. And like, I'm your girl for that. Yeah. So they're going to take people like me buy our content and expand what's mm -hmm. available on their networks because yeah. they're always in this race to grow. I mean, exactly. it's going to be this constant race to the top. And I think e-learning is going bigger and bigger. We know that the research shows that this is a massively growing industry. Um, and so that's my vision. And I think I'm perfectly positioned to be at the top of that when people get wind that this is obviously the way forward. So maybe you can help me manifest it. Oh my God. Yes. You're putting it out there. We're putting so. it out there. Man, that this episode drops, and we will see the follow up to see how that will work out. Yeah, when so, I when I get my Netflix series on manifesting your best self, I will come back on Wild and Basic and share all yes, the juicy deals with you guys. Well, on that note, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was really fun, and hopefully, this is like the beginning of our series that we can have it together. I love <laughs> so, you. thank you guys so much for tuning in today. You guys can listen to Wild and Basic on all social media platforms and also on podcasts, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys.